It's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to send you all my warm greetings as you gather in Copenhagen for the second Memory Studies Association conference. I'm recording this message from my home town of Melbourne, Australia, on the other side of the world from where you all are in Copenhagen. And as I speak to you, there is monsoon-like rain pouring down outside, a feature, a new feature, of our Melbourne early summers. So much as I really wanted to come to the conference, in the end I had to make a rather hard decision that given all of my commitments and the distance and the time involved, I was going to have to say no. It was a det decision determined by what they call here in Australia the tyranny of distance. So it's not surprising that when my thoughts turned to what I would say in this message, I thought I would talk about location. Things are different here, and not just because our summer is your winter. The questions that get asked here and the research that gets done are all inflected by our location, its histories, its cultures, and its feel. So one challenge for memory studies, as its reach extends, is how we can tune in to these differences and to ways of thinking that might or might not help us to engage with the local, the regional, the national and the transnational dimensions of where we are. There's a lot going on in Australia as well as in New Zealand and the Pacific region. Our Australian and New Zealand memory studies networks have held a series of events and our Australian network has a Facebook page which you can visit. And in New Zealand, there's just been a wonderful, rich conference titled Oceanic Memory. It would be great to integrate our region more fully into the association as it develops. But for now, thanks to the organisers for this opportunity to send greetings and masses of luck with the conference. The tremendous success already of the Memory Studies Association shows that the field is in rude health. And I'm really delighted with the Journal of Memory Studies new collaboration with the MSA, which brings a whole host of new opportunities and benefits. These include a dedicated MSA issue uh, from February 2019, free access to MSA members, and an annual journal book outstanding award for the first books authored or, or co-authored by MSA members. The Journal of Memory Studies is in its strongest ever position in terms of submissions and, and, and downloads, which have grown every single year since our launch in 2008. And I'm delighted that in conjunction with the MSA, we are moving from four to six issues per volume. For me, although certainly not for everyone, the holy grail of memory studies is to find a more productive relationship between work on memory in the head and that in the world, or in the wild is a better description. And it is here in, in a field that is perhaps uniquely suited to an advancement through interdisciplinary work that I don't think the journal has been so successful. I mean, there are some uh, notable exceptions, uh, Dan Schachter and Michael Welker's special issue on connecting memories in July 2016, for instance. But on the whole, the, the question we posed in the inaugural issue of Memory Studies in January 2008, how do we realise calls for interdisciplinarity, still has only patchy and unsatisfactory answers. For me, entering into dialogue about different critical assumptions is essential to interdisciplinary work. And this is about interrogation and dialogue between these critical assumptions and achieving some kind of pathway forward as a result. But as many of us know, forging a common language and a common understanding between the cognitive, uh, the cultural and the social uh, is not easy. Amanda Barney and I, for instance, took several years to even begin our memory wild project on interdisciplinarity and memory studies as we needed to learn 
you know, the, the very basics of each other's assumptions, our, our concepts, concepts and methods, uh, as, a, as well as to unlearn many of our own. And I think from our initial research, I would say that some scholars may talk positively about interdisciplinarity in memory studies, but don't really believe in it uh, or think it is really achievable. And more broadly, memory studies needs much more risk taking. It needs to be much more radical. It needs more innovation, more visual and practice based work, as with the ethno sociological work of Sarah Gensberger. For all these reasons, and many more, the MSA is the greatest opportunity the field has had in years, especially enabling so many more and more diverse voices to be heard towards a more uh, dialogical enterprise. I would say uh, multi-directional, but apparently that term has already been taken. The first MSA issue in memory studies will be published in February 2019, and I urge the MSA to be innovative and creative in its content every year. So what conversations, uh, commentaries, interventions, interviews, images, uh, reviews and great provocations, provocations would you like to see? Um, Im imagining and inventing and, and, and running the MSA is astonishingly difficult and time consuming. Uh, and so I, I warmly congratulate Aileen and, and Jenny and Jeff uh, and Jonathan and Wolf and Tia and Sarah for their uh, fantastic work. And finally, I'd just like to thank John Sutton, who is one of the founders of the Journal of Memory Studies, who is stepping down as editor after a decade. Um, his continuing con contribution to the field is, is unique and I, I think unparalleled. And I'm also pleased to announce that Stephen Brown is joining the journal as editor from the new year. I'm sorry I can't be in Copenhagen this year. It, it looks a really fantastic conference. Um, but I hope to see you all in 2018. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Helin. I'm speaking from far away in, in the south, from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Since I cannot attend the conference in person, I want to send my greetings and best wishes for the conference. I know I am missing exciting discussions, deep and fruitful ideas, and meeting new, especially young colleagues who are building the field of studies with new ideas. I will also miss the fun and the sociability across continents and disciplines. My longer term wish is that these conferences and the association itself engage in an active policy to make our work truly global. Not to repeat what has become standard in these types of academic organizations, namely the dominance of Western European and North American scholars and approaches. Not to repeat, which is a slogan important for memory work in South America, means in this case an effort to democratize the field it requires to go beyond North and South conversations and Northern papers dealing with issues in the South. It requires a democratization of paradigms and agendas, pushing to reverse the current geopolitics of knowledge flows. The challenge is there, let's face it, and act. Hello, this is Michael Rothberg calling in from the University of California, Los Angeles. I'm so sorry to be missing all of you friends and colleagues in Copenhagen. The local organizers, the co-presidents, and the executive committee have put on an absolutely amazing event. I never would have dreamed that the Memory Studies Association could have grown so rapidly and so dynamically in just one year. I hope that in the not too distant future, I'll be able to welcome the association to UCLA. When I spoke at the inaugural MSA conference in Amsterdam last year, I suggested that the organization was coming into being at a moment of danger. It was the year of Brexit and the American political presidential election, among other things, and the far right was clearly on the rise. One year later, the situation remains at least as troubling. 
In Germany, we have seen an extreme right party whose members openly call for a reversal of German memory culture elected to parliament for the first time since the defeat of National Socialism. In the US, we have seen neo-Nazis rally around Confederate monuments. But this moment of danger is also a moment of opportunity, both for memory activists and for memory scholars. On the activist side, I'm thinking of the interventions of the Center for Political Beauty in Germany, or the growing movement in the US calling for the removal of monuments tainted by legacies of racism and colonialism. These interventions are subject to debate, of course, and that's where we have a role to play. We, as memory scholars, have the opportunity, indeed, I'd say the responsibility, to contribute to public discussion about such matters of pressing concern. We can use our expertise in thinking about the history, culture, and politics of memory to take part in dialogue about the uses and abuses of remembrance. We can be part of an informed movement that confronts the dangerous memory politics of our times with the possibilities of transformation and change. I'm disappointed not to be there to take part in your discussions this week, but I'm sure you're going to have a productive conference, and I look forward to joining you again soon. So long. This is a message for the Memory Studies Association uh, of goodwill and of solidarity and regrets that I'm unable to attend the opening session of this association. I look forward to doing my bit in the future to make this venture as interesting and intelligently organized as it is uh, a place of encounter and solidarity among scholars, young and old alike. All the best for Copenhagen. Okay. Hi there. When I thought about a video message on this important occasion <clears throat> at the opening of this MSA gathering <clears throat> here in Copenhagen, the first thing that came to my mind was a quote from William Wordsworth. He said at some point, this is the way he defines poetry, that it is something that gives um, <clears throat> to an airy nothing a local habitation and a name. And I think that this is exactly what the courageous founders of the MSA have done. They have given, number one, a name to something that is very dispersed, amorphous, fragmented among many, many disciplines, namely a community of people interested in memory. And number two, they are creating occasions for a local gathering to challenge each other and to meet and discuss. So, number one, they are opening actually two very important pathways into the future. The first is on, off, in, online, online by creating very effective digital channels for networking and communication. And number two, they are creating also local events to meet face to face and to discuss across the generations. So, here are my three cheers for the MSA. Number one, for the <clears throat> founders. Number two, for the institution itself. And number three, for the vibrant community of students, researchers and scholars all over the world.